Hey guys, Michael here. In this preview clip from our patron exclusive episode on Top Gun Maverick, we share our initial thoughts on this super fun blockbuster of a movie. In the full episode, we go on to talk about a ton of things, including the film's peculiar third act construction and how it manages to deliver on nostalgia fun without watering down the actual dramatic impact of the story. To listen to the full episode, head to the Beyond the Screenplay Patreon. The link is in the show notes. I hope you enjoyed this preview clip of our episode on Top Gun Maverick. Hello, patrons, and welcome to this patron-exclusive episode of Beyond the Screenplay, in which we are talking about Top Gun Maverick, the 2022 film directed by Joseph Kaczynski, screenplay by Aaron Kruger, Eric Warren Singer, and Christopher McQuarrie. I'm joined by the Beyond the Screenplay team, Trisha Rand. Hello, everyone. Brian Bittner. Hello, hello. And Alex Calleros. Hi. So before we dive into this, we so we didn't have a, a vote this month uh, because we kind of realized not quite last minute, but sort of last minute ish. That's like, oh, we're all going to we just talked about Top Gun. We're all going to go see the new Top Gun. Let's have a hot take patron exclusive episode about Top Gun. Uh, so that's where we are now. That's what we're doing here. Uh, and uh, you, uh, well, explain it again. Yeah, let's... <laughs> In the beginning. Uh, and so th- this we also realized that this was this is going to happen again next month because for some reason, completely passing understanding, <laughs> all four of us are going to see Jurassic World Dominion together in the same theater on the same night. And uh, we're like, well, we have to talk about it then. Um, So prepare yourselves however you need to do that uh, for next month's patron exclusive being Jurassic World. Well, join the watch alongs because I'm hosting two watch alongs of Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So you can pop into those if you want to somehow (laughs) prepare yourselves as though those movies will matter at all (laughs) going into Dominion. I mean, apparently like blew the Velociraptor, like the story arc is coming to completion. It does seem like there's (laughs) these same characters will still be there. And it's it's believing in the, okay, whatever. Anyway, we're not here to talk about, it's always been about blue. (laughs) (sighs) Apparently. Uh, But yes, join (laughs) Trisha in those watch alongs. Uh, normally it's, it's like sometimes hard to follow the movie while doing the watch along, but I think in this case, you don't need to just, yeah. just dive in. Uh-huh. Dinosaur is still fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be, it'll be great. Um, speaking of things that are great, let's talk about Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this was so much fun. I had so much fun in this theater. So Alex and I saw it together in IMAX. I had seen the first trailer that they released the last year, whenever that was, or two years ago, 14 years ago, whenever it was that they yeah. first announced this movie, <laughs> and I started looking forward to it, uh, and hadn't seen anything since. Um, and, like, you know, the lights go down, and then the, like, the t- 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 I can't do it, but, yeah. you know, the music, the Top Gun <laughs> yeah, music yeah. comes in, yeah. and then the, and it's, it, like... I was just in it from that moment. It goes into danger zone. It's just like, yeah, it got me. It, it got was, me. It was hard. for you, Michael. It oh, was all for you. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, lots of stuff to talk about, start to finish. I had tons of fun. I want to talk about the third act a little bit because that was the only part that bumped but recovered for me. So we'll we'll talk yeah. about that. But man, what a blast! And like, what a a movie blockbuster that like yeah. we haven't had in such a long time. We'll talk about that too. Um, but Brian, tell me about your experience. When did you see it? How hot of a take is this coming for you? Yeah, I saw it last night with a few uh, just guy friends of mine who it's been quite a while since like the five of us just went out for a night together, you know, so it was the, the perfect movie to see under those circumstances. And packed theater, of course, um, and just everyone was so in it and like sort of talkative, but in that way where when a movie with a movie like this, it's okay. You know, like when, when Jennifer Connelly walks in and like leaves the door open, just this woman <laughs> yeah. goes like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
perfect. Um, yes, that so is yeah, the theater experience. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was a great time, and I was I was just so invested the entire time. Um, like I was like emotional and and just like smiling and having a great time. It just and, and you know this is as someone who's not even a mega fan of the original. Uh, it just still was like, you know, as a having seen the original, I'm like, oh, I really love this like tribute to this character or this, you know, nod or whatever. But also just appreciating it as a standalone movie of like, oh, I really care about this relationship and I really care about, you know, this thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just just so much, you know, and it my thing is like the checking the boxes of the the decades later sequel right which we talked about in crystal skull we talked about with blade runner 2049 and it just this one did it you know it was like we're going to keep the overall aesthetic from the original like with like you said the music cues um the sort of silhouette shots you know like there are shots that just sort of feel like they are like the modern version of the original the the camera's a little too close a lot of the time which is exactly how the original is <laughs> like tony scott's always like step two feet closer to the camera um, but it feels like a modern movie. It feels like a movie that that is should be made today, where it doesn't have those crystal skull things of being like, yeah, but that they did that in Temple of Doom, and it's like, yeah, but that that was the '80s when you got when you could do stuff like that, and people didn't care. You can't do that anymore. This felt like a a very um, modern movie that was also a throwback, and it just I just feel like it really nailed it. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Cool. Okay, Trisha, let's bring you in. Yeah, I mean, this movie is great. Like, <laughs> it's like it's so good. I don't know. I I I think it got off to a, a little bit of a slow start for me. And and I want to like get into the structure a little bit with you guys. But the first hour of it, I was like, this is a good movie. This is good. It's solid. Like they're doing character stuff. They're doing like plot stuff, I'm with you, there's exciting, you know, there's some really exciting flying already. This is a good movie, this is a good Top Gun sequel also. But when it got into the second hour, and especially when it like kicked into gear in at the end of the second act, it, it has such a, a very interesting pacing to it, like from the midpoint onward, that, but it, it just becomes like, maybe the most exciting thing I've seen in a movie theater in like decades. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's when they really get into the mission and they're really flying and it like, it feels so much like riding a roller coaster where like, I, I don't know how they do it. Like I've seen, <laughs> we've seen the, the run, right? Like the trench run, like the, the, mm -hmm. the bizarre specs of this mission, which I love. I'm like, right. why yeah. would it be this? Okay, great. I don't, I don't care. Right. Like it's, it, that's, that's like what screen, good screenwriting can do, right? It's like, well, the mission could be anything. Let's make it the most insane. Like this would never be a mission mission that gets to show off like all the really, really cool, like hard parts of flying. Fantastic. I love it. But like, we've seen them do it virtually like and do it in their you know in, in their planes and stuff but not and you know in the place probably four times like six times i don't know how many times we've seen them do it and so there's no reason why it should be that exciting when they go in to actually do the mission but because of the like framework around it i can't wait to talk about this more but like because of the framework around it and the in incredible aerial photography it just becomes like i cannot believe this is a thing that was put on film that we get to watch it's outstanding like it's so thrilling and it's such an amazing ride for like this whole second half of the movie that never lets up and it's just who like i i just walked out of the theater with a grin a mile wide and like <laughs> basically haven't stopped smiling since then I think it single-handedly restored my faith in like the decades later requel, whatever mm. this is. I I was just so fatigued of this and I was like, I don't know, man. And everyone said this was good and I was like, I don't know how it can be good. Like really, really, really good. No, it, it really is. I think that, like I said, I would have, I would have probably changed the pacing a bit and I want to get into the first half of it with you in addition to the second half. Um, but otherwise I'm just like, what a, what a triumph for a movie that really deserves a triumph. And for Tom Cruise and for all the people who made it, like, I don't know. There's yeah. something very, very raw, raw American about it. And that's not even something that I, like, thought I had any 
<laughs> feeling for anymore. Um, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, why am I feeling the feelings about like right. serving the cut? I don't know, serving the country, like serving the I don't know. It really is more about Maverick than it is about that. But it just like manages to you. It manages to um, have you just rooting so much for these characters and this. It's so clean. Like the goal is so clean, the obstacles are so clean, yeah. and yeah. so the win is so like clean and like <laughs> stick the landing perfect ten. So, yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, it pumps you up. I was definitely like coming out of the theater like, oh man, I could run somewhere if there was anywhere to run. Uh, oh man, <laughs> yeah, right. just driving yeah. in my car on the way home. I'm like I'm driving fast. I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Cool. Okay. And Alex, what did you think of Top Gun? Yeah, I mean real mind up with you, Trisha, about just my experience of the movie because yeah, during the first hour or so, it was like, oh yeah, this is this is what I expected. It is a very good legacy sequel, lots of obligatory scenes that we have to have, which is like here's the new recruits and here's like their personalities and like there's the cocky one and you know, here is a really long like moment to really establish that uh, Tom Cruise feels really guilty about Goose. You know, and and so just like I was like, okay, cool, you're doing all the work you have to do, and I know what you're doing, and like I appreciate that you're doing it generally well. And I agree with you, Trisha. But once we got to like the midpoint and and beyond, you know, when you know there's the first thing that goes wrong in the training where two of the students almost die and they're in the hospital. And then kind of, and then the comeback, you know, the uh, the Tom Cruise or Maverick showing up to do the run you know, under the allotted time. Mm-hmm. Uh, from that point on, the movie was just pure pleasure. Where I was, I I hadn't gone into like a finale or third act or just big final mission with the kind of amped up stakes and emotion that I felt going into that mission. Where I really did think anybody could die. I really did think that things could come to a head in a really unexpected way. All bets were off and the personal stakes that were well established. He's bringing Rooster on the mission. Like it just, yeah, I was just getting chills. I was excited. I was tense. Uh, and I was feeling like you said, Trisha, those like something I had missed from feeling in movies, which is like back when I used to see blockbusters as a kid, like a swelling sense of like, honor or duty or pride or you just from like a war movie or a battle movie or a even a fantasy kind of star warsy movie just those those simple movie emotions i hadn't felt that earnestly in a long time and everything surrounding the the second half of this movie i was feeling them full on and like coming close to tears multiple times and so just what a what a joy to get to have that experience again that i hadn't had for a long time, uh, just as yeah, a simple blockbuster kind of about warriors doing their thing and actually feeling something while watching it is just an accomplishment. Yeah, well, so yeah, you used the word earnest there, and I feel like that's the thing we talked about it in the original Top Gun, and I feel like they brought an earnestness to this film, and I don't know that we've had an earnest, non cynical blockbuster film that also isn't a superhero film that also isn't a star wars film mm-hmm. like this <laughs> right? this is a true right. rarity but like youngsters listening now we used to have this every summer this is like what yeah. block, like summer right. blockbusters were and so it, it feels kind of like you were saying brian it's this throwback where it's it's the old it's new it has nostalgia but it's not running on nostalgia it's keeping the things that were like cool and great about the old school blockbusters but modernizing them and making them accessible to a modern audience really impressive i'm really impressed by the filmmaking and yeah so it sounds like there's actually a lot of like structural writing things that we can talk about now mm-hmm. which is i think i'm yeah curious to get into so seems like universally we love it but there are some interesting things to talk about in the construction of it as well Mm -hmm. i hope you guys enjoyed this preview clip of our episode on top gun maverick to listen to the full episode head to the beyond the screenplay patreon the link is in the show notes